Hi, my name is Melissa Mandarakis and I'm a physiotherapist and PhD researcher from the University of Sydney, Australia. I'm excited to present to you the results of our project, the development and validation of the Shakumari Tooth Disease Infant Scale, which will be published this December in Brain. This project was supported by the NIH-funded Inherited Neuropathies Consortium. The INC is a global network of CMT specialists and researchers with sites across Australia, the USA and Europe. With support from additional sites in Australia and Thailand, we were able to make this project possible. In many types of CMT, functional limitations can present during the earliest years of life, with important milestones such as standing independently, crawling and walking being delayed or unable to be reached. Demyelination and axonal damage can occur early and progresses over the lifespan. Intervening at the earliest stage possible provides a window of opportunity before the onset of chronic pain, deformity and disability. So the FDA identified that the success of the clinical trial is really dependent on the outcome measures that you use. In terms of outcome measures for CMT, we have the paediatric scale, which was developed and validated for children aged 3 to 21 years of age. And then overlapping with this outcome measure, there's the RASH validated CMT neuropathy score, the second version, for adults with CMT. And these cover the, the spectrum of disease severity. But what we're really missing is an outcome measure specifically designed for infants under 3 years of age. And that's what CMT infant scale will fit in. When assessing infants, items included in an outcome measure need to be highly functional, observational, and require very little instruction or effort to initiate. The first step of developing the CMT IMS was to systematically review the literature. And from there, we were able to generate a list of relevant items specifically for children or infants and children with CMT. We did a series of validation studies to refine the preliminary 31-item CMT infant scale. One of the procedures we used was RASH analysis, which is a relatively new statistical method. RASH allowed us to use assessment data from 128 infants included in the study, where we systematically assessed each item to reduce the pool and create a linear interval scale whereby only the most able patients can achieve the best scores on the most difficult items. This resulted in a psychometrically robust 15-item outcome measure that was shown to have excellent intra- and inter-rater reliability. It includes seven gross motor and eight fine motor functional items and takes approximately 20 minutes to complete, which was well tolerated by infants. Gross motor items ranged from simpler skills such as sitting and crawling through to running and balancing on one foot. Fine motor items included skills such as pointing and grasping a marker through to more difficult bimanual tasks such as tearing paper and buttoning. So to account for the effects of normal growth and development in infants, we transformed raw scores into Z scores whereby the mean and standard deviation of age and sex matched healthy controls are used to show how different an infant with CMT score is from infants without CMT of the same sex and age. So here are the CMT infant scale Z scores of our 26 patients included in the CMT group. Infants with CMT had a mean Z score of 1.6, with scores as high as 7.7, .7, which was significantly higher than the mean of the control group. This provided evidence that the CMT infant scale has good discriminant validity meaning that it can discriminate between non-groups, ensuring that scores from those with CMT are higher, indicative of increased disease severity. It was also interesting that the more severe neuropathy subtype had the highest or worst Z scores compared to infants with a more milder CMT1A subtype. Uh, we're really excited about this project because for the first time we have an outcome measure the infants with CMT. What we found was that the CMT infant scale is both a reliable and valid measure of disease severity. The CMT infant scale also provides the opportunity to conduct natural history studies in a population that we're unable to uh, measure before now. 
I guess the most promising result of this study is that it can really place us in a position where we're ready for clinical trials now of interventions during the earliest years of life, which is something that we were unable to do before. We would like to thank our international collaborators and all of the children and families who generously volunteered to participate in this project from all over the world.